Sharer. It's uh, my attempt to engage with, uh, uh, let's say, one particular disaster, but in connection to others and in connection to the way that it has been inscribed or uh, uninscribed, I would say, in the archive, uh, in photographic archives. Um, and uh, it was part of you just, you know, at the end of your presentation of uh, my biography, you mentioned the project Enough. Enough was a project that I did in relation to 1945. After I did a lot of work on 48 on the destruction of uh, Palestine, I looked uh, at 45 to understand in what was the context in which Palestine could be destroyed. And the context is, uh, uh, on the one hand, 500 years of uh, colonialism or imperialism, and on the other hand, uh, what is called the New World Order of uh, the end of World War II. The violence that was imposed uh, under the campaign of ending uh, the violence of the war itself. Just a second, I have to turn off my email, otherwise we will hear it, sorry. Uh, so I looked at 45 and I tried to question uh, three axes uh, that I conceive to be very important in the way that we have access or we are denied access to uh, the violence uh, 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 that is being produced as part of our political regimes. Uh, so what I'm trying to understand is how this kind of uh, uh, large-scale violence is part of political regimes. So I looked at three axes. One of them was the temporal one, like saying, for example, that the war is over. There is a moment when we are being said that the war is over. For example, May uh, uh, 8, 1945. But we know that at the very same day, there are three big massacres in Algeria, for example. We know that a few months later, we have a, 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 a bomb a, a being a thrown on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and entire cities are being a, a destroyed. And we know also that at the end of World War II or as part of ending World War II, between 1 million and 2 million uh, German women were raped. And only this sentence that I'm saying now, after, you know, uh, uh, so many decades that we don't even have an access to the accurate number, something approximate between 1 million and 2 million. And it's not really, a, uh, you know, a, a debate around, you know, three, four, uh, 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 five more or less uh, women that were raped. You are really speaking about very big numbers. And uh, there is uh, a consensus among historians uh, about uh, that this rape uh, took place, but the, uh, it was, let's say, understudied uh, in an uh, uh, outrageous uh, way. So uh, as part of the ending World War II, uh, this number of women were uh, raped in, in Germany, in other places too, but I'm looking at uh, Germany. And uh, given that we have such a huge photographic archive that shaped our imagination about what is World War II, what is photography in World War II, what is the figure of the cameraman or the photojournalist that we got out of World War II, I think that this gap between the fact that uh, 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 photography was uh, uh, shaped as uh, a, a human rights you know, tool, as uh, a component in uh, creating a different uh, visual literacy after World War II, and the fact that uh, uh, we don't have images associated with this rape, I wanted to enter uh, uh, into this conversation and to see how I can uh, intervene in it. I would like to say uh, one more thing before I start uh, to show images and to show you how I work with uh, uh, photographic archives, and it's my positioning. Uh, I read uh, many, many years ago a book uh, that was published after the death of the author, uh, was published in English after the death of the author by Anonymous, so an author that uh, kept her name uh, uh, hidden, concealed, and it is called A Diary in Berlin. 
And she wrote a diary uh, from the very first moment when she uh, understood the situation under which she is living, which is a situation of mass rape. She wrote a diary for uh, uh, during several weeks. And uh, when she published this book in German, she was attacked from different perspectives about uh, uh, publishing this book. One of the perspective, uh, perspectives were that uh, German women are not allowed to be victims in uh, uh, the story or related to World War II. And when uh, several years late, later, when the book, so she was really attacked and she asked her editor to remove the book from uh, circulation and to publish it only after she will die. And uh, the book was republished. And then there was a film by Elka Sander uh, uh, made out of the, or in relation to uh, the book, a film in two parts. And she was also attacked. There is a volume of October that was uh, dedicated to the film. And in it, one of the uh, authors who was a Jewish uh, woman. She writes from her position of a Jewish woman, and she repeats this uh, argument, which I found outrageous, and I found outrageous even twice being an Arab Jew or being um, a, a Jewish a Muslim woman uh, uh, coming from North Africa. These are uh, the Arab Jews or the uh, uh, Jewish Muslim uh, uh, that are not European. Uh, so I found it outrageous and I started to engage with it. And now I would like to share with you the screen and to show you uh, how I entered into the conversation. Uh, so I'm starting from the end with the title that I give to this uh, uh, exploration, which is a quotation from uh, her book, which is, uh, I even spotted one uh, woman wearing a hat. And why do I say I'm starting from the end? Because when she spotted a woman uh, wearing a hat, it means that the rape really declined and women could go uh, again into the public uh, space. So I call, I call this project the natural uh, violence of rape. Uh, and it is a paraphrase on a book by Zebald uh, uh, that is called The Natural History of Destruction. And I will go back to this book and I will explain what I'm trying to do in connection to this book. So uh, I'm showing this project now in Berlin, The Natural History of Rape in the Berlin Biennial, uh, curated by Kader Atia. And what I'm showing is a revised version of uh, uh, this project that I started, uh, I cannot recall now exactly when, but uh, many years ago. Uh, and what you see here is on the wall is the timeline that I created out of uh, uh, the diary. I took excerpts from the diary and I put them one after the other in a way that every day is meaningful. Because in the timeline of mass rape of German women, uh, this notion of the end of the war associated, for example, with uh, 8 uh, May 1945, as a completely different meaning. So my question is how to suspend uh, uh, these kind of uh, imperial categories that we have uh, to describe the beginning and the end of events and how we undo them, how we unlearn them through different approaches. So for me, following the diary day by day was such an entrance. Uh, and I will explain later uh, uh, what is the background of uh, this, uh, the, this timeline that I created. And here you have a kind of uh, uh, essay surrounded by images and books that you can see them also on the table. So let me start by this you know, shelf of books. Here you see actually 9,558 pages. It's, uh, you know, I cannot say that it's a random collection, but let's say that it's the collection of books that I gathered when I looked uh, closely at uh, 1945, uh, from, mainly from the visual perspective, but not only. So I counted the number of pages, and we have here approximately 10,000 uh, uh, pages, and only 161 of them are dealing with the rape of women. And these books are 
only books that came out in the uh, one decade and a half that preceded the moment when I started to work on this project. And as you can see from the titles of the books, 1945, post-war, Germany 45, after the Reich, Endgame, Ruins of the Reich, what you can see is that all these books that came, uh, uh, let's say, in the uh, 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 last decade of the 20th century and the first one of the 21st century, all these books, the authors of all these books, all of a sudden they realized that they moved too quickly, that historians moved too quickly from the war to what came after the war. So these books are actually turning the year 1945 into uh, uh, what they are looking at. So rather than a transition from before and after, they are creating this year as a space that they are looking at. And as I said, even this space that they created belatedly in relation to uh, the war uh, was not enough. It required uh, uh, the diary, for example, in order to be able to account for what is the meaning of the rape uh, in relation to this kind of world destroying uh, campaigns uh, that we see going on for 500 years. Uh, and now when it comes to uh, the images that are included here, and we're speaking about thousands of images, uh, uh, there is no mention of rape in the images. So the mention of rape is in the text, only 160 pages. So this is the problem, right? This is the arena of my problem where I'm asking these questions. But as you could see in this photograph, uh, in the uh, center of which you have a famous photographer that is holding a camera really in a way that is ready to take a photograph, right? What we have here is the image of the photojournalist always ready with his camera uh, in his hands to take a photograph if something happens. Not only that, we have a second photographer that affirms this imagery of the photographer, right? Is taking a photograph of the photographer, which means that we have here a reaffirmation of the importance of the figure of the photographer, but we have a third photographer, which is the photographer who took this photograph, right? So we have three cameras in one square meter, three cameras, and we are in 1945. We are during the time where this mass rape took place, uh, but yet we don't have images of rape. So there is here a beginning of uh, 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 an archival entity that I started to create, which is the untaken photograph of rape, because we tend to relate to photography as a productive practice. We have a camera, the camera takes photograph, and then we have the product, we have the outcome. But there are so many situations where a camera is being held in the hands there is a click even. We know that the photograph was taken or we don't know that the photograph was taken, uh, but we don't have access to it. So either we can call it untaken photograph of rape or we can call it inaccessible photograph of rape in the case that Yevgeny Khaledi here in the middle is keeping in his uh, uh, you know, archive these photographs. Or we can call it undeveloped photograph of rape. So what this project led to is uh, the emergence of categories that became very helpful when we are speaking about large scale uh, violence, uh, campaign of violence in relation to which we don't have photographs. But nonetheless, we know that there were many cameras in the uh, arena, but somehow they uh, didn't yield these images. These images. So rather than looking at this as an image of Yevgeny Khaledi, or rather than look, uh, relating to this image as an image of a photographer uh, 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 in front of uh, 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 Brandenburg Tor, I relate to this as an untaken photograph of rape, or I relate to it as the ubiquitous presence of cameras in the arena of disaster without making photographs uh, accessible. So this is, uh, 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 the, let's say, the second approach to the question of the absence 
or, or the dissociation of images of rape from uh, the imagery that we have. Why the second? Because here, uh, gathering together these, you know, books and telling you that they discuss rape, they show us you know, uh, 70 years or 60 years after the end of war, they recreate or reaffirm what is the visual imaginary of the violence of the war, of the end of the war, and they reaffirm that rape is not part of it. So this is one approach to engage with it. This is the second. And uh, I'll move slowly, slowly to several others. So here you have an image of a woman uh, running and you have smoke uh, in the background. Um, and alone, you know, I don't know the situation of this particular woman, but there is a question of scale here. What do we do when we speak about between 1 million and 2 million women that were raped and individual image? There is uh, here a problem that we have to solve. We cannot reduce uh, 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 such a mass scale uh, uh, violence to individual images. We must do a different kind of uh, work. So what I'm trying to do in relation to uh, 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 those images is to suspend our immediate reading, which is the indexical reading, which tells us this is an image. If, for example, I will find 2 million images of uh, raped bodies of women, I will not show them to you. I will not show even, uh, you know, tiny part of it. So I think that when we it comes to the way that uh, uh, extreme violence is being inscribed in the body, we also have some questions that we have to ask, right? Because uh, uh, I don't think that we have to uh, display uh, mass images of uh, uh, I don't think that we have to display, sorry, images of mass violence only in the way that it is being inscribed in the bodies of the victims. So looking at this image, not from the indexical, indexical point of view, keep it in mind when we will see other images where we see women running away, when we will see uh, the arena where rape took place in terms of the rubble, in terms of the smoke, in terms of the circulation uh, in the street. But now I would like to start from a different perspective because we cannot look at the rape of German women only in connection to Germany. We cannot look at on it only in connection to Germany first, because mass rape of women is what I'm uh, uh, arguing as part of this work, is the foundation of our demo uh, democratic regimes. Uh, uh, when you think, for example, about uh, the US, the creation of the US, uh, 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 um, uh, the US uh, United States, it is based, uh, it was uh, declared, the, uh, the Constitution, uh, the emancipation is uh, based on uh, uh, hundreds of years of uh, enslaving uh, uh, people who were kidnapped from uh, Africa mainly and on uh, uh, the mass rape of black women by the enslavers. And those are the enslavers who create the space of democracy, which means that they live outside the rape of women. When you think about, for example, the partition of India, Pakistan, and uh, uh, the transfer or the mutual transfer of population from India, uh, Pakistan, we know that also many, many, many women were raped uh, throughout this process. When you think about, for example, the destruction of Palestine, also Palestinian women were raped by uh, Zionist uh, men. So uh, in many uh, different places we have, we see mass rape as the foundation on top of which democracies emerge. Uh, so this is one reason why we cannot address, we cannot engage this mass rape uh, directly uh, 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 as if it was separated from uh, other uh, uh, situation at the same time or uh, 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 of the same type. Uh, and the other one is given that the mass rape of German women was uh, uh, meant to end uh, World War II or was part of the thing that meant to end World War II, I'm looking at a different type of writings by women to see how do they engage with uh, uh, what uh, uh, was made 
uh, uh, main territory, which is to destroy worlds, to declare when it starts, when it ends, etc. So Marguerite Duras, during uh, World War II, she is waiting for her husband, who was uh, uh, in a concentration camp. And she wrote to uh, uh, two or three diaries. Uh, one of them was published under this title of La Duleur, which is uh, the pain, or I don't know how to translate it uh, now in English. And she uh, says, uh, Berlin is in flame, in flames, sorry. Millions of civilians are fleeing, awaiting the final consummation. Germany is beaten to a pulp. So what she's saying here in these sentences, she repeats uh, the way that the, uh, 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 the uh, political and military elite in Europe of uh, what is called the allies, the liberators, the way that they treat the destruction of entire cities. The days of weeping are over, the days of glory have returned. And she listened to Charles de Gaulle, who is uh, uh, leading the French Free Forces uh, uh, against uh, 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 the German, without any account, obviously, of the way that France is uh, 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 destroyed and ran uh, uh, cave gas, not chamber gas, but cave gas in Algeria, for example, what is known as Fumad, that uh, ran a uh, uh, rape of uh, Algerian women, that uh, expelled and massacred millions of Algerian uh, from 1830 uh, till the end of the Algerian war. Uh, uh, so Charles de Gaulle, he speaks, uh, uh, he tells actually uh, French uh, uh, people uh, 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 that uh, days of weeping are over and the days of glory have returned. And this is uh, 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 before, for example, the prisoners uh, in uh, uh, concentration camps and other inmates in concentration camps were uh, liberated. But for him, now we have to be happy. Uh, and think about it also in connection to Berlin is under flames. So she is actually problematizing the way that as uh, citizens of different countries, we are being called to ignore uh, 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 the violence that is being done to uh, certain people because of their uh, uh, national belonging or affiliation, because of their racial or gender affiliation. So what I'm trying to do with these women with which I'm entering into this arena is to undo the way that we uh, are, are being trained under empire for, for centuries to uh, 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 be oblivious to uh, the pain of uh, the pain or the suffering or the harm of different people because of their gender, racial and uh, ethnic affiliation. At the moment, the people are paying. He, Charles de Gaulle, doesn't notice. The people are made for paying. Berlin is burning. The German people are, are paying. Uh, that's normal for him, the people's generality. So, uh, as I said earlier, May uh, 1845, if you just do a, you know, a Google research about uh, this date, but located in Algeria, not located in uh, France, where you will see uh, 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 shining faces, what you see are the uh, bodies that uh, uh, are lying on the ground, uh, the victims of French massacres in Algeria. When you look at... Uh, um, in August, uh, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, through the American eyes of uh, Time Life magazine, it's the war ends, right? It's not about what is going on with the people. It's about images of ending and beginning of new eras. Um, and this is, you know, two slides from a film that Marguerite Duras wrote the, uh, uh, the script, which is Hiroshima Monamu. The hospital in Hiroshima exists. How could I have, uh, uh, how could I not uh, have seen it? So we see with Marguerite Duras, she is engaging uh, constantly with the question of how can this catastrophe take place in front of our eyes and we don't see them. So rather than speaking about absence of images, the question is uh, what shaped our literacy that we don't see the catastrophe, even though it is there. It may be out of the frame. It may be articulated differently. But we cannot say that large-scale catastrophe were not uh, uh, shaped into images. So the, 
the question is uh, what happened to our uh, uh, perception that we don't see it. And this brings me to uh, uh, Zebald and his book on the natural history of destruction, and uh, in which actually what Zebel is saying is that we didn't see images of the destruction of Germany and is awakening right out of several decades of a uh, 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 kind of sleep. And he says uh, in the way that the war was understood, what happened to German was not uh, taken uh, in account. And when I read this, I was a little bit uh, 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 troubled, I would say. Uh, uh, I was a little bit troubled because he ignores completely what happened to German women. So he speaks about Germany in this kind of abstract uh, 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 no, uh, uh, notion without accounting for the way the German women are trying to speak about the rape uh, that they went through for uh, uh, several decades they are trying, but they are constantly being silent and uh, uh, there are 200,000 uh, children that came out of these rapes. So they are surrounding, uh, you know, uh, 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 whoever speaks about the fact that those images were not uh, seen. And he writes, even in later years when local and amateur uh, war historians began documenting the fall of German cities, their studies did not alter the fact that the images of this horrifying chapter of our history have never really crossed the threshold of national consciousness. So, you know, these are just two examples of books that came out really in 45, 46, 47, very, very early, in which you see images of destruction and they not only circulate, they are being merchandised when uh, they are being merchandised and they are uh, uh, reprinted in different places. This is, for example, an image from the family of men, which is a very uh, 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 um, popular exhibition that was you know, seen by millions of people. And this is an image from uh, Germany. Uh, this is another image from Germany in the same exhibition. Uh, and uh, Zeppeld, uh, presents these images as if they are being seen for the first time. And this is, uh, for me, another uh, a mechanism that makes us ignore what, uh, what and how we are engaging with images, because these images are not being discovered by Zebald. Thinking about the catastrophe as something that individual authors like Zebald are discovering is so problematic because it makes too much, uh, you know, it put too much weight on uh, the individual image uh, uh, when we are speaking about two million victims, as if uh, uh, what they say, as if the images that they have cannot be counted, right? There is only the way that the single author reveal to the public for the first time those images. So as I said earlier, I'm trying to show you different, you know, uh, procedures to engage with the way that those images are being uh, 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 shaped or made inaccessible to us. So another mechanism or another procedure is by telling us that those images were unseen, they were seen, and we have to ask questions why they were published, why they circulated, and nonetheless, the presence of German, uh, the rape of German women was not associated with them. And even when Zebald uh, uh, publishes his book, he still doesn't see the rape of German women. They are, in, are inexistent in his book. And just to illustrate uh, to you how much these images circulated and consumed by German, here you have, you know, a collection that I was able, you know, to create for myself of uh, 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 images of destructions uh, that circulated in Germany from the very uh, uh, first months of the end of uh, the war. They were uh, uh, taken by people, they were printed, and they were uh, purchased by many people. They were sent all over, etc. And I uh, uh, came across them for the first time when I read uh, uh, the account of Hannah Arendt returning to Germany from where she uh, ran away uh, in the 30s with the uh, rise of the Nazi uh, 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 regime. Uh, and she returned to Germany uh, immediately after the war, and she was uh, astonished to see 
how much uh, the destruction of Germany becoming, uh, you know, uh, a token in uh, different uh, contexts. Context. So coming back now, you know, Hannah Arendt, uh, Anonymous, uh, Marguerite Duras, Zebald is, belongs to a different category, doesn't see the catastrophe, even though he became associated with, I will tell you, the Germany also was destroyed, which is not something to discover, it's something to uh, engage with and ask questions about. So coming back to Marguerite Duras that wrote the script for Hiroshima Mon Amour, uh, 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 she wrote the script for Hiroshima Mon Amour uh, uh, that Alain René uh, filmed. Uh, during the war, she uh, worked uh, together with Cartier, Henri Cartier-Bresson and a few other people. They published a journal uh, about the prisoners uh, in concentration camps mainly, but not only during the war. And uh, so she worked closely with uh, uh, Cartier-Bresson. And uh, uh, in the diary she write, I think of the German mother of the little 16 year old soldier who uh, lay uh, dying on August 17, 1944, alone on the heap of stones on the Quai des Arts. So here we have three uh, um, manifestations of the way that Marguerite Duras uh, 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 engages with uh, uh, what will she do with the uh, 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 decimation of Germans only because uh, 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 they have to pay the price. So what you see here is the image uh, taken by Henri Cartier-Bresson that I don't show the image, I show, you know, a drawing because I don't, uh, 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 I refrain from drawing just to emphasize that uh, uh, the body was not covered and was on the bridge, uh, which uh, uh, is probably an image that imprinted uh, Marguerite Russ when she wrote this in her diary, and then when she wrote this scene in the film, where we also see uh, the body of a German soldier on the uh, uh, K uh, uh, um, after he uh, was shot and he was the lover of the French woman whose hair was uh, chauvin. And uh, speaking about uh, women whose hair was uh, shown uh, in France, which was a punishment that uh, Frenchmen in the resistance inflicted on French women with a uh, 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 relationship with a uh, German uh, soldier. And we're not speaking only about the single woman in the film that Marguerite Duras wrote uh, 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 the scenario about, but we are speaking really about, you know, mass uh, women whose hair was shown publicly and uh, on the top of the Google uh, uh, search that show you how many there are, I uh, focused on several frames and uh, looked at them. And why do I bring this? Why do I bring the uh, German soldier? Because I was uh, intrigued by the question, why does Hannah Arendt and Marguerite Duras uh, do not account for the um, mass rape of German women? So of course I cannot have an answer, but I can have a speculation. I think that if Marguerite Duras knew about it, she would account for it. It goes in the uh, 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 in continuity with the way that she engaged with a different type of violence inflicted by uh, 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 white male regimes at the end of uh, World War II. Uh, and Hannah Arendt also, I believe that she would account for it if she uh, knew about it when she came for Germany, which makes me think that when Hannah Arendt went for Germany to three co consecutive trips, I think the first one was in 49, 50 and 51, the rape was already removed from the public arena. And this brings me to uh, now closer engagement with photography to show you how do I go from the first image that I showed you of the photographers, the three photographers in one square meter that didn't take photographs. How do we engage with what we have as photographs? Because they took photographs, but not photographs that are being associated with rape. So just very briefly, because I see the time this is the image of the photographer, right? Running, will climb on, uh, you know, obstacles just to take the photograph. This is the image of the news. They are running out of a press conference to report to us 
But when it comes to a, 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 a mass rape of women, we don't see this gesture. So mass rape of German women took place when Germany was destroyed uh, uh, from the air, uh, air bombing, uh, bomb away, as is the title of one of the many books of uh, the destruction of Germany, images that were taken uh, from the air. Uh, and um, much of this bombing we know was not uh, a part of uh, uh, defeating the Nazi regime that obviously should have been defeated, or uh, uh, much of this bombing was in order to create a new world order, which means that many of the campaigns of violence that we see at the end of the war, the mass rape of women, uh, 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 the uh, 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 neutralization of uh, Japan as a power, the rehabilitation of Germany to bring it back to be part of these European uh, empires uh, with no accountability if, uh, uh, except, you know, some symbolic uh, things. And uh, um, the massacres in, uh, uh, I mentioned the massacres in Algeria, a French colony. I didn't mention the massacre uh, in Senegal and in many other uh, places for the Euro those European power to be able to continue to hold to their colonies, mainly in Africa, but also in Asia. Uh, so uh, coming back to Germany, Germany is being bombarded and uh, among uh, uh, these, you know, uh, ruins, among these half uh, built, half ruined houses, the rape take place. Uh, uh, and given that the rubbers is all over, we're not speaking about rapes necessarily in interior spaces, because the notion of an interior private space no longer hold at this moment, because the, uh, 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 the inside and outside, interior and exterior, are completely being blared by the bombing. So this is again a kind of Google search just to give you uh, uh, a feeling of uh, the destruction. Now I told you at the beginning that I'll show you what is the background uh, uh, on which I put the, uh, this is the timeline. Uh, uh, you see, this is the timeline excerpts from uh, diary in Berlin. So the backgrounds are, I took from the different images that were taken in Germany during the time that the diary was uh, uh, written by anonymous, I take, I crop only the rubbers and the smoke and I'm trying to create a connection between the level of rubbers and what Anonymous describes in the book. And the rape is at its peak when there is a lot of rubble in the roads, when there is still a lot of smoke, when there is still a complete disorder. And when there is a complete disorder, what we see also is that women are taking care of themselves even though they are being raped, but they are taking care of themselves and they are imagining a possibility of a world where they are leading it, not only uh, the men, or when they are negotiating what will be the terms of after. So one way that she described that they are negotiating is through, for example, the exchange of food. They create black market, or they agree with their rapers that they will be raped only by one man rather than five uh, uh, random men uh, uh, in exchange of uh, having food or in exchange of having wine, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so what I did, another procedure, as I said, several procedures, and other procedures is related to those books that I showed at the very beginning, where we have several lines in each book about the rape, so I took randomly eight books and I uh, took sentences from these books about the rape that could be a caption for an image. I don't have the image because it is an untaken photograph of rape, but I have the caption. So why do I need the image when I have the caption? It's not about viewing the body of uh, uh, the raped woman. It's not about viewing uh, uh, torn bodies. It's about reorganizing our imaginary, reorganizing the way that we understand the political regimes under which we live that are being shaped through the rape of women and through our uh, visual perception of uh, uh, violence. So I inserted these kind of black, uh, uh, black or blank squares and I wrote the, uh, the captions underneath them that are taken from the same books 
uh, from which uh, the captions were taken. This is an old version of the exhibition. You see here also the timeline and the visual essay. And this is now uh, in Berlin. This is the table on which you know I put uh, the images and the books that I'm looking at. I will not have time to dwell on the connections that then I'm doing between existing images and these captions because I want to end with the uh, New World Order. So first of all, this is the cover of the, the book, A Woman in Berlin, Eight Weeks in Conquered City. Uh, so here is an image that should be at the very end of the timeline in terms of the rubbles. It's true that what we see is a ruined building, but look at the uh, pavement. It is completely cleared. Look at the street. You have women dressed as women. When we read Anonymous, we read that at the beginning, they didn't dare to go outside. And if they went outside, they dressed up as men, just in order, you know, to grab some food from a neighbor or, or just to take something from somewhere. But here what we see is in a way, life is coming back. Uh, so this is at the very end of the timeline uh, uh, that can be built out of anonymous, rather than the way that this image is being presented by the press, as this is one of the scenes presented to the eyes of the Allied soldiers who entered war shattered Berlin. This is a complete lie. This is not what they saw. This is after the women not only had been raped, but they also worked to clear the arena of rape. So uh, when we rely on these press images that completely distort the temporality and tell us that this is the first images that they uh, uh, saw, and this is an image that circulated in very many different places, we know that we are being lied to because this is when the rape is already being over and they are actually clearing the arena from rape and they are telling us that there was no rape because this is the first image as if April and May, when we, April, May 45, didn't take place. Uh, so look at the pavement here, recall the pavement that we saw in the very first image when the woman ran. Oh, sorry, I'm going back instead of going forward. Okay, so here you see kind of, you know, mid uh, image where there are few uh, people in the street, but there is still smoke, there is still rubble in the street. Uh, let me go to uh, this one when they are just understanding where they are and they are going to go away. Here you see that there is still a lot of rubble, which means that uh, their houses are still pen penetrable but the roads start to be clear and here you see an image that i read it more closely but now i will not have time to do it here you see a uh, 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 degree of rubble the degree of smoke and the way that the bodies of women is actually uh, uh, being uh, accessible uh, through the uh, private and the public arena and i think that i'll stop here uh I wanted to speak a little bit about black market punishment, but maybe it's we will end it here. Thank you, Ariella. Um, well, it's so many things, as usual, um, in your work. Um, I think I, I'd like to ask a, a couple questions uh, related to your project, also to the text that you had sent me around the project, because there was a couple of ideas that you didn't specifically get to. I think it's nice to touch on. Um, for example, the, the idea of evidence, um, which, you, which I work on in my exhibit um, around the Chinese uh, deaths in Mexico, the undocumented deaths. Let's say it's just through some scattered oral history. Um, and in your text uh, around the, the rapes, the untaken or inaccessible photos of rapes, you mention in your text um, about evidence and not seeking evidence within the photograph because the evidence is there. We just have to look at it, um, at each photograph in a different way. But so I guess my question would be how, um, 
how how do we how do we make this bridge between uh, the lack of something like evidence um, or what you what you call the archival silence in your text what is available in the photograph and how do we make this bridge between what is there how we can reread or reorganize our reading and um, and how this can create a new national consciousness. Maybe I, this word that he uses, Sebald, is, although I'm a very big fan of Sebald's writing, it's a very problematic word, the national consciousness. I would say it's a national narrative, no? Something that's written for us instead of a consciousness. But so how, what do you make of this idea of evidence within a world where we seek, somehow we continue seeking justice um, around questions like rape, uh, murder, violence, disappearance. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bunny, for this question. It's a very big question. I'll try to engage with uh, part of it. Uh, I think that the category of evidence is a category that fails us in a way. And we have to be suspicious toward this category because uh, the entire imperial project of murder, massacre, genocide, rape, mass rape, I mean, uh, plunder, dispossession, is based on uh, the idea that we have to bring evidence for something that really doesn't require an evidence. It was done in the open, in plain sight. How can you bring an evidence for you know something that was done in plain sight, that there are still so many people who can testify for it, but they are not considered as the uh, legitimate people to testify for it. Um, so I think that the, the category of uh, uh, evidence is a category that fails us, and deliberately so, because the entire system of uh, a legal system or international legal system is based on evidence. Right, so you have to be you have to bring evidence for which actually you cannot bring because it's very difficult to justify to justify the evidence or to show a reliable evidence for individual case when you're speaking you're speaking about the rape of two million women. Who was the raper in this case? We don't know, but we know that this rape took place. So when I'm, for example, in, when I engage with the rape of Palestinian women in uh, 48, it was more difficult in the sense that uh, it was not agreed upon by historians. So it was, it was more difficult to try to take, you know, from here and there, uh, written evidence, oral history that was collected, etc., in order to start to build the case, I'm not even speaking about images, but in the case of uh, uh, the destruction of Palestine, do we need any evidence? In the case of the uh, 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 expulsion of Palestinians, do we need any evidence that were expelled? But if you have to now go to court and to show, to bring evidence that Palestinians were expelled, it is possible that you will not be able to show this evidence because the fact that there are millions of their descendants living around the world is not an evidence. So, um, when it comes to slavery, why there is no yet, you know, an approval of reparations for slavery? Because there is not enough evidence, not enough evidence for what? That there was slavery? So the category of evidence is really a very, very, very problematic category when we are speaking about imperial violence that reproduces itself over centuries. Mm -hmm. uh, and it reproduces itself over centuries across different places. There is no one type of violence uh, 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 that you will identify in Mexico that didn't take place also in at least 20 other places mm -hmm. at a different moment, maybe, uh, uh, being perpetrated this way or not that way. So I think that rather than thinking about this violence only in terms of evidence, uh, we have to think about it as uh, 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 the violence that created the regime under which this kind of violence can continue to be exercised and that our uh, perceptual approach to it is still determined by the way that photography was shaped by the same imperial powers that exercise the same imperial violence. Mm 
So uh, I don't know if it answers your question, yeah. but it's an attempt. No, completely. And I think that it, it takes me exactly to my next question, which these are, you know, since we've been discussing and the material you, you shared with me, um, to think about my own work, I, I make a connection now with the exhibit and my, my attempt to um, use photography to talk about violence and how can we do it. My, my next question um, would be within a potential uh, history, as you propose, uh, within this idea of placeholders for work to be done, memory work or um, let's say reparations to come. Um, what what is 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 it put, is it possible to make photography to reshape the way, make new photography to reshape the way we um, think about uh, what has been taken from us, maybe by the the imposed um, use of photography or the 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 omitted um is it is it possible still is there a chance to rewrite the way we speak through photography i think that this is what we are trying to do all the time i mean many people are trying to do it all the time and we are trying to negotiate the terms of something that was you know uh determined uh against uh the possibility that people will claim accountability uh, for what was taken from them, that uh, against the possibility that people will uh, uh, demand restitutions or return or reparations for everything. So just yesterday, there was, you know, a very joyful day. Uh, just before we learned about abortion, we learned that Tamara Lanier, who is a descendant of slave, uh, enslaved people, and is uh, trying to sue Harvard for many, many years, tried first to talk with Harvard about the images of her ancestors that were seized from them uh, when they were enslaved in full uh, 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 complicity with Harvard. And she tried to uh, ask Harvard to recognize her as a descendant of slavery and to restitute or rematriate the images to the family. And Harvard uh, refused to talk with her and she tried to file uh, a lawsuit and the lawsuit was dismissed by the court and then she appealed and it took several months until yesterday there was a decision, a very brave decision of the judges that Harvard cannot continue not to talk with Tamara Lanier and they allowed her to sue Harvard because in the US you have to be allowed by the court to file a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. uh, so yesterday was a big day for uh, uh, another attempt to use photography in a different way. And why it is a different way? Because it is not about only the interpretation of the images. It's about who has the right to continue to hold what was taken from others with violence. Mm -hmm. And Harvard pretends that they have property rights in the images, but given that they took these images from our ancestors with violence, the fight is to expropriate Harvard uh, 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 from uh, uh, continuing to possess uh, those images. So for me, this is a use of photography. So the use of photography or the, uh, 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 the use of photography is, cannot be reduced only to take new photographs. Taking new photographs is one way. We cannot think about it in, uh, 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 in a separate way than all the other uses of photography in terms of what is in the photographs, in terms of what we can uh, achieve while juxtaposing photographs, and what we can also achieve by withdrawing certain photographs from circulation. Because this is also part of the battle, because we don't want constantly to see a big uh, 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 white museums that are built on the expropriation of people of color, to see them constantly depicting the same group of people, mainly people of color or women in vulnerable situations while they perpetrated the violence. So the question is how we transform, how we dislocate uh, uh, the violence from the body of the victim into the structures that are responsible for the production of this violence. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Thank you.
Um, I think that uh, I can maybe open up now for the reading group, if because we we read a short essay of yours that comes from Potential History. I think some some of the reading group were familiar with your work, but um, in Spanish there's very little translated. And since our reading group, uh, although everyone speaks English, reads English, we thought let's concentrate on texts that are only in Spanish. Also, it's interesting to uh, think in that way what is accessible for our Spanish reading audience and or a reader and what is not. So if um, si tienen preguntas alguien del grupo, sería bueno para Ariela, según uh, following what we read or, or today's talk. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> I have to ask you. Ask you ah, no, I know. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, mostly to to. Uh, it seems mostly. Uh, Inspired. I don't Just hear you. Else. Sorry, I think that I'm uh, I'm on mute. No, now I hear you. Okay. Well, hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Incredible. I I seem immensely uh, inspiring what you said because uh, in a way we we live uh, prisoners of image. In in a certain ways, the the, the uh, how to put it. I'm, I'm uh, mostly interested um, in the way not not uh, I'm, I'm not uh, angry about what the institution uh, has uh, made with the, with memory, but mostly with what uh, artists can do. Artists uh, engage with uh, archive uh, research or or worried about how reorganize the, the imaginary. As you said, I think that that was the, the key. Uh, the key uh, idea that uh, that I was uh, in a way uh, waiting, because as you said, it's not about viewing, and in a world that it's supposed to be in this regime, in this uh, uh, world in, uh, uh, where where image is almost everything. It's very very uh, inspiring to hear you that you uh, propose something that is not just about image. And that it's uh, more about, uh, I don't know, maybe you use a lot of uh, books, I mean, literature, or, or, or let's say the word, the spoken word or the written word, as a, as a way to not protect us, but to always, maybe to, I will not say I'm not an iconoclast to stop of producing images, but a way to, to precisely find a, just a, a moment of, uh, of uh, really see how uh, the production of images in the modernity has structured history in a way that we are not even able to say what you were, were saying, no, that it's not even about evidence. We are, it's an, an overwhelming amount of evidence uh, that we have of what the modern world is, is made. There is no bad evil or good evil, as to, to put it uh, in, in the Hannah Arendt words. You know, I mean, in the end, this kind of uh, continuous violence uh, against each other in, in the foundation of modern nations—it's it's crazy. But uh, what is the limit of this? Uh, it's more, it's more, let's say, tactical uh, question, mostly for people like me that works with archive a lot. But I'm uh, always uh, thinking how much we can uh, uh, play with this, uh, trying to rearticulate, to make the image or the documents say what they are not uh, giving us. They're not saying already. How to make this uh, uh, task, this, this duty, but without being uh, trapped also in the recombinant, uh, let's say, postmodern way of, of using history to, you know, as, as Nietzsche said, that the, the way to, to, to fight against this uh, sickness of past or, or nostalgia or to, to play or to give history too much place in our lives. It's not just important to forget, 
but maybe that's one of the conservative cynical way to 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 say that we we all know all this violence but we also there's some kind of consensus uh, consensus about or consent about uh, forgetting you know in order to reconciliate to create the nation to be together to you know to go forward to the future to the modern uh, progress uh, let's say to arrive to this uh, promise of liberal world that we live in that it's this uh, is the true the triumphalist imagery imagery of liberalism that we're trapped in and even the categories and all this but well when we start to play with the documents to reorganize the, the, the imagery where are the the limits of how to I mean, you said the captions, you know, you have the captions, but not the image. That is super interesting to, to precisely, the starting point now is not how to re, how to, to, to rebuild the way we looked at the world, but to start with the captions that we have that survive, you know, but which are the limits if you, I mean, it's more about the artist, artistic practices that, that we know. And they sometimes they just we we can see that this there's just a kind of playing uh, uh, with these things. But what is there's something that uh, is missing sometimes uh, for me. What is it, we have to take this risk, or what is your 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 thoughts on, on this uh, thing? If you if I did some kind of sense in my in my <laughs> question. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. You have to understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I understand, no, I understand your, question, your question, but I completely, I completely disagree, disagree with, with uh, 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 all, the all the premises. premises. Do I, I hear I myself, myself twice? twice? Yes. I don't know I don't why. Know why. Carlos, has Carlos has to close, close the, the mic. mic. Somebody okay. says. I want, to, I want to mute. <laughs> okay. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> So I completely disagree with you because uh, uh, the way that you ask it, it is as if the problem is with the way that we deal with the images, rather than the problem is that this violence is still there and did not arrive to any closure. So uh, what I disagree with, to make it very simple, is the understanding that we have to move forward, that we have to rely on progress, on this, you know, uh, uh, technology that destroyed the world. The progress is a technology of destruction, is not a promise. The future is a technology of destruction, is not a promise. And the way that people are struggling with trying to make sense of the violence that was done to them and to their ancestors, for me, is not a play, is not superficial is uh, uh, an anti-colonial engagement with trying to understand not only what was done to us, what was done to others, but how we can oppose to it in a world that is doing everything for us not to oppose it, for example, in the name of progress, for example, in the name of reconcilia reconciliation. How can we even imagine reconciliation without accounting for the crimes? for which we are being asked to reconcile. And sometimes people are starting to engage with different types of violence only after 100 years, because they, it takes them years to understand what happened to them, to their neighbors, to their ancestors. So I think that it is not about playfulness, and hence uh, limits should not be put to playfulness. She, limits should be put to the way that this violence, this imperial violence that became our, the regimes under which we are being uh, governed, how to put limits to this uh, uh, regime. And this regime is run by technologies and we have to limit those technologies. Uh, those technologies is progress, is one of them. Uh, photography as a process of accumulation for the sake of accumulation is violence, is this kind of technology. So uh, I'm afraid I'm not going to propose any limits. On the contrary, I encourage each and everyone who has, uh, you know, uh, uh, violence to reckon with to continue to do that. 
it is part of the reconciliation. Reconciliation is not uh, uh, somewhere to bring us uh, toward uh, another uh, 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 technology uh, that will tell us that peace is what we need or that reconciliation of a certain type is what we need. What we need is to transform the condition under which we share the world with others. So, sorry, I cannot enumerate limits. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, I think uh, maybe uh, Carlos's formulation was also a bit... Um, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, was a bit, uh, comp I think that he also probably agrees with you on the fact that future and progress is not obviously the answer. I think the way he formulated it uh, came out the opposite, but yeah, I, I, I understand his question about terms of the other limit, I guess in, in this um, playful postmodern way of, uh, but I, I, I find this a great challenge, what you say, Ariela, that we should all be at least trying, attempting to um, work with this uh, imagery of, that's been given to us of the past, um, because from there is the potential to, to, to move something. It probably fails in many occasions and maybe in some ways gives like a, a place of opportunity. But maybe it's not a nice time to end on this agreement uh, against uh, progress and uh, reckoning with uh, with the violence of the past. Yes, we can. We can also end. Anybody want to? I mean, it's a good opportunity maybe to ask Ariela something about uh, even the archive text we read or. I don't know if any of the people registered have a question, but don't be shy. We have a little bit more time. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ariel. It's really nice to um, listen to everything you have to say today. Um, so I really thought of a um, really short quote that comes in Norma Jane Baker of Troy by Ian Carson. And while you were talking, I was thinking about this uh, and I would like to read the short quote and I would like to know what you think of it. It is not really a, um, a question, it's just to, to see if it um, triggers something. Because I think that it, might, it may work. Uh, here in Norma Jane Baker of Troy, uh, Norma Carson, um, she does, um, she thinks of the word rapere, um, that it will be in Latin uh, rape, but uh, she um, puts it uh, in a way that it should be understood by, or, or understood by, um, by language, by the, I mean, this link with language. So I'm going to read it and I would like to, to know what you think of it. Uh, it says, history of war, lesson three, to take. If you pick a flower, if you snatch a handbag, if you possess a woman, if you plunder a storehouse, ravage a countryside, or occupy a city, you're a taker. You are taken. In, Asi in ancient Greek, you use the verb, and it comes in Greek, which comes over, over into Latin as rapio, rapere, raptusum, and gives, us in, and gives us English rapture and rape, words stained with the very early blood of girls, with the very late blood of cities, with the hysteria of the end of the world. Sometimes I, sometimes I think language should cover its own eyes when it speaks. And I would say, sometimes photography or art should cover its own, uh, uh, its own eyes when it speaks. But it may it may go uh, it may not be related, but I felt that it kind of was. So it was just this. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for bringing it. It it is related. Uh, 
and I don't have anything to add to it. I think it's very strongly written, very powerfully written. So thank you for bringing it. Well, I also, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to figure out how to put it as a question, but I'm just gonna start talking about this that I've been thinking about throughout the, the talk, which, which I find really, really interesting, especially this idea of the untaken photograph or the undeveloped photograph, in this case of rape, but of any kind or of any, um, any, any, hecho, any uh, uh, thing that yeah, happens. And I'm thinking uh, in, in our responsibility, not only in terms of, of archive and of, of looking at, at history through, through that lens that you put there, that is, I think, really, uh, really, really important and relevant, but also how today we're flooded by images also. And in this many images that we're flooded by, there are also missing things that we're not seeing. And how, how we're responsible to see, no? or to see even what we don't want to see. No? Because here, when you talk about these images of rape, I, I can already imagine them and imagine the horror of those images, if they exist or not, no, they exist now in my mind. And I think that's really powerful. And now if, if I think of today and the many horrors that we know are happening everywhere, no, and, and many of them we see, others we don't, and many of them we decide not to see maybe also because it's so, so difficult. And, and I, I want to ask um, about this responsibility that as a viewer, like if you can say something about that, how we, we, we all have that responsibility in terms of images, not to really see the world in, 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 in terms of, of um, yeah, of, of these ideas, not of the, the image. I don't know if this makes any sense, but it's something that has been circling there about like today, really, what, what it's being produced and what we're seeing and, and how, how our responsibility is not only there in the past, but it's here every day. Yeah, so thank you. Um, I have two things to respond to it. One of them is that I, uh, I question this notion of the past. Because I think that as I spoke briefly, but I'm doing it, you know, in lengths uh, uh, in the book, uh, the invention of the past is an imperial project. There is no such a thing like past. They really invented it in order to put these in the past to expect us to move forward. Uh, so everything, or whenever we engage with violence, we engage with it where we are with other people. Some of them are living, some of them are dead. But the fact that they were uh, uh, assassinated doesn't exclude them from the space that we are trying to create when we deal with violence. So uh, I think that uh, our responsibility as uh, viewers or spectators is first of all to reject this separation between the tenses that give us this kind of impression that our faces uh, 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 should turn to the future and we have to stop dealing with the past because we really need to be responsible for the present but the present is the immediate outcome of this thing that has been invented as past and our ancestors were never so uh, uh, distant from us as they became through this technology of the past so i think that our responsibility is to make them present with us when we are speaking and the other thing that I wanted to say in response to what you're asking is that um, I forgot what was the other thing. Uh, remind me the beginning of your question, and I will be um, 
So the one because the, at the end you spoke about uh, the uh, responsibility. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we, we have a responsibility, but we have to unlearn the way that this responsibility was created throughout the history of uh, imperialism, which is the kind of cosmopolitan responsibility or unsituated. Uh, 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 subject viewer or subject spectator, we have to ask ourselves from where we are speaking and to engage with whatever we are speaking in relation to where we are, rather than supporting this idea that there are spectators and there are victims at which we are looking. We have to ask ourselves how the violence that we are looking at is related to us not only on the family basis that we have to have an ancestor who was a victim of violence, how it is related, for example, to our citizenship, how it is related to our privileges, how it is related to the way that we perceive the world, how it is related to the way that we do not perceive the world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yes, we have to be responsible as, as spectators, but not in the way that we have been taught uh, which is the unsituated uh, universal spectator. Thank you. Um, yes, it makes me think something I was writing down at the beginning of the talk when you spoke of the war is over and uh, you, as you say, Algerian uh, Jew, displaced already, um, how this, of course, allows you to see that sentence of the war is over in Europe then uh, in a different way. And I think part of this responsibility, as you mentioned, I think is for all of us to realize that we <laughs> are all somehow um, fab fabricated, fabricated national beings or where we are. I think this is where I am very interested in also picking apart this idea of the national um, is because it's a construction. So as, as long as we are allow, uh, able to do that, which is everybody's responsibility, I, it doesn't matter um, where we're from. I think if, we, if we're here, the big thing in Mexico now is the original peoples, um, los pueblos originarios. So it's obviously a different position for those, but current artists are now engaging with this question and um, I'm not sure if always in a, in a responsible way, let's say, um, taking responsibility in how they've participated or their position um, of privilege has participated in also this uh, fabrication of uh, violence, but uh, I, I think it's such an important point that you make to for us to be active and not passive. And thank you very much. I don't know if somebody else wants to say something. I said thank you so much for inviting me. And I hope some of what we discussed resonate with uh, what you did. And when I'll meet you soon elsewhere i hope we will continue this conversation definitely thank you thank everybody, you, everybody. Thank, thank you Angela. thank you so much for your for your talk and all your disagreements are important also to to <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you thank you thank you Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See you soon.